the i've been asked to speak about the impact on um, industry uh, in kerala and uh, specifically about the opportunities uh, once the we get reconciled to this idea about covid i wouldn't say post covid but i don't think this is going to go away just like that and in fact i think one of the biggest problems of covid is the fact that uh, even it is very clear our authorities in delhi as well as uh, in most states haven't yet understood the fact that we are going to have to live with this health versus wealth trade off this between the economy and this and this kind of binary seeing this situation in these binaries is part of the problem so we have these extreme things like lockdowns and um, and uh, they're going to be oscillating between one and the other and we are going we are finding that we are really not getting anywhere so the i think the the context is that we are not dealing with something which is going to pass it's not like some bad dream which is going to pass it's going to be part of our lives so how do we uh, so that is very important in when we're thinking about a post so uh, you know kind of situation it's not like we go, we do reset and everything goes back to some some kind of a no normal i don't think there's going to be any kind of normal second point i want to make is uh, i wasn't here doing mr kem dom shaker's presentation but um, from what i understand i i have a, 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 a from my study of the um, industrial development of the last three decades the untold story of kerala's industrialization is the growth of strong nationally and globally competitive msmes in the last particularly which have started in the last three and a half decades and many of them have grown to grown from startups with 50000 rupees and a few lakhs startup capital to global scale today employing thousands of people and competing nationally and globally my company is one of them today my company for instance employs 1400 people and um, this list includes um, and i am talking only about manufacturing enterprises not it not tourism not all the things for which kerala is normally understood and identified with i am talking about only manufacturing enterprises for instance india's most efficient steel casting unit is in kerala india's one uh, india's top uh, you know uh, what you, electronics hardware exporter is is located in kerala india's top medical diagnostics manufacturer is located in kerala india and in fact asia's top dental prosthetics manufacturing company is located in kerala india's top uh, you know, what you call blood bag manufacturing in fact the world's uh, one of the world's leading manufacturing plants single location manufacturing plants is located in kerala like this i uh, uh, i am looking at about 50 such companies for my fourth book and i'm uh, uh, you know the the, the evidence is the, uh, a related point is i am convinced from what i see that covid is also going to be a a, a transition point for moving away from large integrated manufacturing facilities and large integrated commercial entities as companies to which are not going to be resilient to use the uh, they uh, they don't possess that elusive quality which nasim talib called anti fragility they are they are unable to manage uh, uncertainty and what we are going to have to learn to live with this uh, increasing doses of uncertainty and the pandemic is only going to be one of them uh, there uh, there are so many other factors about it the next point uh, which is related is which i have to say is manufacturing will be the way to go for manufacturing and for which kerala is particularly suited the most resilient form is dispersed manufacturing from the industrial revolution till recently the whole effort has been all technology manufacturing technology has been oriented towards integrating manufacturing now we will have to look at disintegrating manufacturing because technologies are now available plant both on the management platform level as well as at the engineering level for instance additive technologies like 3d printing this can be done in decentralized locations and as well as you can do assembly you can have component manufacturing in centralized facilities and do the assembly into and the architecting and the assembly into finished products in decentralized so the third important concept which i say uh, is dispersed manufacturing and the essential thing which dispersed manufacturing needs is dispersed urbanization because as the late uh, president apj abdul kalam and the indration professor indration said what 
MSME's need is urban amenities in rural areas. And Kerala is ideal because it's like a semi-urban, semi-rural setup from Kasargod to Kalikavla. So the, this entire thing, we have dispersed urbanization, which has almost reached 50% of, uh, we have the highest urbanization rate in India today. And our urbanization rate is almost uh, matching that of China's. And uh, this is dispersed. We have seven cities of more than 1.5 million population in, in this state. But we don't have one mega urban kind of cluster. That's ideal for this kind of MSMEs. And then the uh, one issue which was mentioned um, was about returning pravasis. I believe that rather than look on it as a big problem, we should look on it as actually a tremendous opportunity. We are going to get back people in, in the basic skills which are required by any growing society, which is you need plumbers, you need electrician, you need um, um, uh, you know, construction workers, you need sanitation workers, etc. Here are people coming back who have worked with the most modern equipment in, 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 in the systematically managed companies in, uh, in large enterprises. And they're going to come back and they're going to be available for local industry to use. What we need is a bunch of entrepreneurs here who, who learn how to use them. So we need aggregators, aggregators who can, ag like you need an uberization of these kind of skills. You need an uberization of uh, pools of trained people who can be deployed on, on, uh, in, uh, you know, in different. And finally, the thing is, Kerala must focus on clusters. We have been talking about clusters for a very long time. I've been, uh, ever since back, as far back as I can remember after I started my, my company in Kerala, we've been talking about clusters. I haven't seen a single cluster coming up here in Kerala. And, I'd, and I think the problem is because you're waiting for the government to do something. I think we should just forget about the government doing anything. Whichever is the government in place, it's just a waste of time. The industries department has absolutely no clue about uh, what are the really the needs of industry. The good news is these 50 companies which I'm studying don't need the industries department, don't need the state planning board don't need any, any, any policy. They just need to be left alone and they will do a good job. Have a clear regulatory framework, have simple rules, and then you'll be able to, um, uh, you know, um, have a good industry which can, uh, I mean, a good environment, a good ecosystem for MSMEs to work. So I will end by saying this. Actually, Kerala, for a long time I have been feeling, is the best situated state in India to become the Taiwan of India or the South Korea of India. In fact, not only, not the best, I would say it is the only state because every other state now is running up against what Amartya Sen and Jean Dries called the limits of growth. Because of the ne criminal neglect of human capital, none of them are going to be able to push beyond the boundaries where they've already reached. They cannot go because they don't have the human capital. Now, Kerala is the only state which has not only not done that, but has earned the praise. And just look at this. Now we add to that, add to all these, uh, you know, HDI and these uh, human development uh, angles, which have been celebrated by a few, but mostly neglected by most of us. It added to that is the fact that you, you, it has been shown that where governance is effective, like for instance, in the health department here and the public health services effectiveness, we had to, Malayalis here were discovering about the efficiency of the government here after reading the MIT technology report by uh, Sofia Falero. And that was when they discovered about the fact that contact tracing was being done in Patanandata by some doctor after reading something written in MIT. You know? So here we are going to be discovering the fact that, and that is a very big thing, a public health service which is functioning, which is delivering safe public places, delivering a level of confidence of the public and visitors that if we go to Kerala, we are going to be safe. This is a good place to live in. It's also a good place to work in. I think the time for Kerala has come and let us not snatch defeat from the jaws of victory by sleeping on it. And I'm saying, let us not wait for government to do anything. The entrepreneurs of this state must wake up. They, they will have no one but themselves to blame if they don't seize this opportunity. Thank you.